Uh, tuduhannya melibatkan yang pertama 4.3 million yang lagi satu 5.2 sama juga sama juga dengan betulan 3 dan 4 sama ya tetapi dipecahkan sebab dikatakan kononnya dengan menyimpankan wang itu uh, di dalam uh, akaun saya tanpa memberitahu apa apa ni uh, income tax itu juga menjadi amla okey menjadi satu kesalahan bawa amla bagi saya, keempat-empat pertuduhan ini adalah karut sebabnya uh, uh, pokok pertuduhan ini iaitu uh, ciri-ciri ataupun inti pertuduhan ini ialah sama ada saya tahu uh, duit atau dana 4.3 dan juga 5.2 asalnya daripada uh, sos-sos yang haram ataupun uh, proceeds of an illegal uh, thing ya? jadi mereka harus uh, membuktikan bahawa uh, bukan sahaja duit ini datangnya daripada sources yang haram tetapi saya juga tahu perkara ini ya? so if you look at that it is quite clear if I ask any one of you in 2013 and 2014 13 and 2014 have you heard of 1MBB or SRC all of you will have to say you've never heard of it ok so how would I know uh, in uh, 2013 and 2014 that there was a matter like 1MBB and SRC something went wrong with 1MBB or SRC which is being disputed which is being disputed by Datuk Sri Najib so it is quite clear if they cannot prove knowledge that I must have, that I know the money I receive from Datuk Sri Najib is in fact illegal money, then the whole four charges drop. Right. So, I feel these are the four charges that was brought by some people. Okay, uh, One is obviously at the agitation of uh, Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim because he wants to get away from the conviction in a court of appeal as well as a federal court in relation to the sodomy two charges because I prosecuted the appeal, you remember? Yeah? So he is trying to run an argument that because I received 9.5 million kononya, yeah, uh, purportedly as a reward to me, uh, for me to prosecute him therefore he did not receive a fair trial which is, as you can see, I did not prosecute the case I did not conduct the case. I only conduct the appeal. Appeal means your record is there. I only take the record. I argue the matter. I can never fix the evidence. I can never make the evidence better and so on. So in a, in a situation of an appeal, even if assuming I'm paid 20 million to do the appeal, how could I improve the case or make the case worse? I cannot. Yeah? I can only argue based on the record. You understand, eh? So, but Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim, although he said that dia punya pengampunan uh, dah padamkan semua kesalahan beliau, uh, mengikut beliau lah, eh? tapi saya, saya memang tak setuju, tapi dia kata the young the betul nagung, beritahu dia punya kesalahan semuanya, dipadamkan semuanya. Kalau semuanya dipadamkan, why are you applying in the uh, uh, apa ni, in, in the court of appeal and the federal court to erase your conviction so there must be something not right with the with the logic of it all right okay Masih now Sri, ada ajur, uh, motif ke di sebalik uh, yang saya rasa motif yang paling kuat ialah satu berkenaan dengan datuk sri anwar ibrahim uh, nombor dua ada orang-orang di um, pejabat peguam negara uh, yang you boleh agak termasuk orang yang tak permanen dalam peguam negara yang hendak singkirkan saya daripada menjadi line up peguam-peguam dalam kes uh, Datuk Seri Najib uh, mungkin dia orang dia orang takut sebab kita punya line up is quite good and the defense is quite good yeah? so maybe they are worried about that tak ada asas langsung it is it is political because as you know India political manifesto 
what did PA say? PA say we will charge everyone in relation to the one MBB. You notice the best that they could do so far again the Tutsi Najib was 42 million. That one is SRC, all right? Now one MDB they are still struggling. I am sure they will bring charges of one MDB again the Tutsi Najib, even if they couldn't complete the investigation, even if they know they're going to lose the case because they get they got to keep up with their words, otherwise the people of Malaysia will will no longer believe them because as you can see. The various things that they promised, the GST and all and all that, are not happening. Yeah, prices are not coming down, it's going up. Your ringgit is getting from bad to worse. So these are promises they cannot keep. Same thing with these charges about 1MDB and the SRC. They have to do something in order to pretend to keep to their promises. Tansri, how does this case affect your position now as a defence? It, doesn't, it doesn't affect at all. Would it reach a stage where you have to recuse yourself? No. No. In fact, I heard rumours they wanted to charge Datuk Sri Najib and me together for the 9.5 so that it is a joint trial. You heard rumours? I heard rumours. You know, Malaysian rumours are normally true. Okay? Malaysian rumours are normally true. So they wanted to do that in order to charge me jointly with Datuk Sri Najib, joint trial. Therefore, I cannot be a counsel to defend him and to defend myself. You, you understand? But that will not work because we got our own uh, strategy if it ever comes to that. Are you confident that you'll be able to uh, clear your name? Um, are you confident that you'll be able to get a bear for us? Okay, there, there are two questions there. Uh, we are contemplating to move the case from Sessions Court perhaps upwards to the High Court because the Attorney General doesn't seem to make any move. Okay, that we will decide very shortly because I feel like cases of this complication, I think a High Court judge is better suited. If you give me an independent High Court judge or any judge, I can almost tell you we will win the case. Give me an independent judge. I don't want a judge that is uh, favourable to me, but just give me an independent, straight judge, we will win the case. Because this is a fix-up. You admitted that, I mean, you're not disputing that you received the money, right? Yes. 9.5 from the ex prime minister. Yes. Yeah. Could you tell us, um, you know, what is what are they about and whether you have uh, a proper return? Okay. Hmm. Now, in in my defence, uh, in the statement that I gave to uh, the MECC, I can't go into detail hmm. yeah, because the case has, a, has been unfolded. Uh, uh, by the way, I must remind you, I'm speaking to you not as a lawyer. I'm speaking to you as an accused person, hmm. so I can speak to you for three, four hours. There is no no uh, no uh, no law that bar me speaking to you. Yeah? So listen, listen. But I, I, My head is shaking right <laughs> now. Um, you remember this uh, lady called Rohayu, who filed an affidavit. She is a special officer to the attorney general. Uh, to the attorney general currently, she was working with uh, Tommy Thomas before. Now she is in attorney general's chambers as a special officer. She said, I did not tell the truth about my claim of the 9.5 million. Now, she's clearly lying, and I'm saying this in public. She's a liar because I did not say I did not receive 9.5 million. What I said was, I did not receive 9.5 million to do the Anwar case. That was as clear as daylight. But she is either not very clever or she is very dishonest. Okay? So, uh, emanating from that, let me tell you, I received 9.5 million in two portions because I have been doing work for Barista National and AMNO since Dr. Mahade's time. And I have never been paid. Not because they are not paying me, but because both sides are not reminding each other. So, they may pay some disbursements and all the expenses, eh? but they are not fees. Dr. Mahathir is aware of this. Dr. Mahathir was the one, together with Datuk Muhammad Rahman, who was the Secretary General of AMNO and Secretary General of Barisan National, who appointed me to do that. The bill that I showed, or rather the, the, the appendix that I gave to uh, Datuk Sinajit, to justify 9.5 was in relation to 40 election petitions. Right? 
46 election petition. Some of these election petition, I'll give you an example. Involve, uh, you remember uh, Datuk Firdaus? Datuk Firdaus was the former Imam of uh, Masjid Negara. I think he went to Anwar's constituency. He had, uh, 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 and he, he, he contested in the election. That case was a very difficult case. That case alone, the bill would have come between 500 to 1, 1 million, 500,000 to 1 million. Then you have uh, Clarence Bonkos, if I'm not mistaken, in Sabah. Um, that is, again, another $1 million uh, case. So you have about 46. Some of these cases are not so big. They may be two to three hundred thousand dollars. But 46, I time it by 250,000, more or less. It came to 11.5. We discounted between me and uh, Datu Sinadir. We discounted another two million. We agreed to 9.5. Okay? So that nine, sorry. You're supposed to get more than, more than that. In fact, if I were to charge all the bills, all the work that I've done for for Barisan National, for Barisan National alone, uh, forgetting about my advice to the various prime ministers from the from Dr Mahathir uh, to Tun Abdullah Badawi and to Najib himself, all the prime ministers I've given advice because they have requested me sometime in the middle of the night to come and give them uh, a legal opinion. Not including that, just pure party, Barisan National and Amno. I'm not surprised if the bill is about 20M. 20, 20, 20 million? 2 zero. Two I'm not surprised. But I only asked at this time because I was I, I was in need of some quick money in order to purchase a property to help a friend. Okay? So because the documentation is not complete, uh, Datuk Sri Najib and I agreed that he will give me the 9.5 in two tranches as an advance stroke loan until I rationalize the billing. Once the billing is rationalized, it'll be, it will be, uh, it'll be crystallized into my fees. Okay? That rationalization took place a lot later. That will answer you why in certain uh, previous years, I could not have declared in the income tax because it has not crystallized into my fees yet. It was still an advance, it was still a loan. You understand? Now, secondly, you know that there is a lot of uh, talks and allegations that various monies are all illegal monies. What is the status of my, the 9.5 that I receive? Although I receive it innocently without knowing the sources. Assuming one day somebody proves, okay, this money is actually from an illegal source, although without your knowledge, is the money subject to forfeiture? If it is, it is debatable, yeah? I don't think so, but it is debatable. If it is subject to forfeiture, unless it's clear, why do you pay tax then, until it is clear? So there are two, uh, two or three uh, reasons, uh, there are many more, why the uh, uh, entry into uh, return of income tax uh, can only be undertaken subsequently. In fact, we have, we have already taken steps. In early 2018, we have rationalized the fees. Very early 2018. Now, uh, which means the reflection of tax will have to be in 2018 at the end of the year. It will be accommodated at the end of the year. I've taken uh, advice from the income tax uh, expert, uh, tax, tax expert, and I have been told I am right in my treatment of the fund. Okay? Now, I must tell you something quite shocking. Datuk Sri Najib was asked to appear today in um, MACC to give a statement about the 9.5. Okay? Now, he is the only other witness who can corroborate or deny my claims. Correct? Because he's the one who gave it to me. 10 o'clock this morning. I was brought to court today without the benefit of Datuk Sri Najib's statement. Because Datuk Sri Najib's statement today was cancelled. MACC said no need. They will think of another day. So what does it mean? It means that the investigation is not completed. You are not bothered to listen to what Datuk Sri Najib is going to say. Whether he say, yes, I have seen this document that now you show me, purportedly from Shafi. 
I've seen this document. Yes, this is my signature, for instance, because he said, okay, uh, noted. All these are documented. On the day, or, or rather, uh, uh, a few days after I received the first payment, he has noted that, noted with his signature. All these, if you do not confront Dato' Sri Najib, for him to give a statement, to either support me or, or otherwise, the investigation is not complete. Why do you think they charge me today? Irrespective of whether the, the investigation is complete. If you complete the investigation, a fair investigator and attorney general will say, let me look at this. Because if I don't look at this properly, I may just lose sight of a proper defense that he may have. You understand? So, they rush to charge me. Alright? Now, compare this to Lim Guan Eng's case. 25 witnesses have given evidence, taking how many days? Nobody said there was no case. Yet, they equally rush and withdrew the case. So, you just think about it. Whether our Attorney General Chambers and the system of justice in this country, as promised by PH, is in fact uh, they, are, uh, they are being realistic about it. Or are you in a situation much worse than before? Because the rule of law is not being obeyed. Courts are not being respected. Uh, the judge that was presiding over in, uh, in Datuk Sri Najib case, without his fault, was suddenly removed. And a new judge came in. Again, the new judge is not at fault because he's just one of those judges. There is no accusation against any of the judges. But one would wonder why? Why suddenly you you change judges? You you can't say this is a routine charge because the whole country know this is not a routine transfer order. You and I know. So you have to ask the question, why do you do that? There are the issues satu statement tadi. Semasa saya dalam mahkamah dia ada keluarkan satu statement you cuba dapatkan nah, statement tu secara pendek mengatakan dia disappointed dia kata ini adalah satu bully teknik untuk uh, mengecewakan uh, kumpulan uh, pembela yang dia dah ada termasuk saya uh, tetapi uh, uh, bagi saya uh, that, that, kalau kalau you tahu watak saya sendiri uh, lagi you tekan lagi keras saya jadi Ah, saya tak jangka. Sebab apa? Bagi saya, uh, saya terima fees. Saya dapatkan bayaran, guaman, khidmat guaman yang saya buat. Umpamanya, katalah ada seorang uh, yang kena di, ataupun dipertuduhkan uh, jadi trafficker in, in drugs. Relatif dia datang, bagi kat saya RM200,000. Sometimes check, sometimes cash. Adakah saya nak tanya dia Di mana dia dapat duit ni Adakah duit ni duit dadah Boleh saya tanya luar Saya tak boleh Saya kena ambil duit tu Kecuali kalau saya tahu betul-betul Ini adalah duit Daripada uh, perniagaan dadah ya, Jadi kalau, kalau dalam keadaan tu Saya tak ambil Tapi secara normal You do not en uh, enquire ya, Saya pasti Datuk Sri Ram pun tak pernah tanya Apa perasaan Datuk Sri Ram Apa perasaan Datuk Sri Ram Image I'm not worried Image saya tak takut langsung Sebab apa? Ini bukan kali pertama saya kena tangkap ha, 19 eight, No, 1987 saya kena tangkap Di bawah kerajaan Dr. Mahathir juga Semasa itu Saya sedang uh, defend Asian Wall Street Journal of all people Saya defended Asian Wall Street Journal Saya menang tiga kali Dalam kes itu Sampai Mahkamah Persekutuan Saya kena tangkap Jalan enam pejabat saya Kononnya saya ada dokumen-dokumen uh, rasmi kerajaan okay? They found zero Asas yang dia orang tangkap saya 1987 Zero Kosong Jadi kerajaan kalah dengan saya bila saya sue kerajaan Peguam negara Datuk Mokhtar Abdullah Masa itu Datuk Mokhtar Abdullah Beliau uh, bersetuju dengan saya Pampasan sebanyak 840 ribu Secara diam-diam Dia bayar sebab malu yeah. Why do you have two passport? Why I have two passport? I have two passport because um, uh, I, I, I was at a material time An ambassador at large 
Jadi bila you jadi ambassador, you have a diplomatic passport. When? Huh? When was it? Sorry? When was it? The ambassador. It is still valid. It is still valid. Tetapi I dah terima surat daripada Wisma Putra about one month ago. To say that I shouldn't use my diplomatic passport. Sebab I am I am no longer uh, an ambassador at large. Sebelum jadi ambassador at large, I was also pangkat ambassador. Uh, Jusa A juga. Uh, di dalam uh, keadaan sebagai wakil um, uh, ASEAN Intergovernmental Commission for Human Rights Aisyah dia panggil ASEAN Intergovernmental Commission for Human Rights saya wakil pertama bagi Malaysia ya yeah, wakil pertama yang 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 pernah ada sekarang Edmund Bond uh, yang menjadi pengganti saya uh, Tasri uh, hari ini Tasri hang on hang on saya pasti bukan semua orang yang terima wang daripada Datuk Seri Najib akan didakwa. Sebab it's impossible. Sebab macam mana you boleh kata just because you receive money, you are guilty. Umpamanya saya dipahamkan, saya tak mau bagi tahu nama sebab tak elok eh. Ada satu syarikat yang supply kain-kain Uh, uniform, baju juga terima daripada Datuk Seri Najib uh, ada syarikat yang supply makanan juga terima wang daripada Datuk Seri Najib dalam akaun yang sama jadi why don't you arrest them macam nak you arrest me, what about them kita dorang pun tak tahu duit tu daripada mana we wouldn't know, takkan kita nak tanya Prime Minister kita sendiri you bagi duit ni duit betul ke ataupun duit curi ke, takkan kita nak tanya Prime Minister Ha? Sama juga kalau Dr. Mahathir bagi kat saya Takkan saya nak tanya dia ha? Lagi satu kita tahu Bahawa um, Pengurusi Barisan Nasional Dan juga Presiden UMNO Dihakkan di bawah uh, Konstitusi UMNO Untuk mengelolakan uh, Apa ni Wang-wang uh, UMNO dan Barisan Nasional Dan dalam masa pilihan raya Memang is an issue of cash You can't be paying Uh, expenses using check you have to pay in cash when Dr. Mahade handed over the reign of uh, AMNO and Barisan National to Abdullah Badawi assets and cash worth 1.2 billion it is on record was handed over 1.2 billion so this story about 116 uh, 100,000 it is a non-issue because it is it is a political fund just after election. There's a balance. Tasri, just to confirm, you will be handing in your application to request request the, the, lead, the lead prosecutor to recuse himself. Yes. That's, really, really yes. That's for sure. Now, I do not know whether you were in court. Were you in court? Yes. Yes. Okay. Some of us. Yes. Yeah. My, my quarrel with Datuk Sri, uh, Sri Ram has been long. Since the days I was a young uh, deputy public prosecutor. Maybe 79. I joined 77. 79, 80, there about. I was already prosecuting very, um, uh, very serious cases. It started with me prosecuting three Singapore millionaires who apparently built Changi Airport. Okay, I've given the details of this case. In that case, um, quite surprisingly, when one of my leading witnesses say that. This transaction has got no authority. There is no resolution. I asked him, what do you mean by there is no resolution? There is a resolution that actually allows the transaction. He says, no, that resolution is fake. It's fraud. It's fake. I said, what do you mean? He said, somebody asked me to remove it and replace it with this fake resolution. The original resolution does not give that power to the company to spend the money like that. So I said, who asked you to do that? He said, I was in Region Hotel. Region Hotel is now um, Park Royal. Region Hotel is now Park Royal, the original Region Hotel. He said, I was in my room. Two lawyers came to my room, asked me to do this. And I asked who? He said, one is YM Jumuboy of Singapore, a very senior lawyer. The other one is Sri Ram. And Sri Ram was there with Jumuboy and RR Chilaya defending the case. As a result of which, the judge told Sri Ram and Jumuboy to get out of the court wait until this evidence is over. Now, the, as a result of that, Sri Ram's office was raided by a warrant of search. But not out of my doing. But people, but he would have thought 
that I am, okay, perhaps with others, have orchestrated it. I was truly still in court. The court case was never fi finished that day when Sri Ram office was ready. Okay? Um, Tan Sri Abu Talib was then the Attorney General. The other uh, pros uh, prosecutor who helped Tan Sri Abu Talib in the application for warrant of search was the late um, DPP T.S. Samanamurti. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure whether you remember him. The Jin Sinapa case, he was the prosecutor. Okay, that was the first. All right, that was the first. The second episode was in relation to uh, his wife, Chandra, uh, Chandra Sri Ram. Uh, she applied in a civil suit. Uh, she sued the KL International School because the son was not given a place in the debating team. Can you imagine that? Yeah, your son never got a place in the debating team. She sued. An international school, if school have got to defend civil suit like this, the premium for insurance will go up for the school and school fees might go up. Would you believe it? Chandra, uh, sorry, Maria Herbert was taken by Chandra Sri Ram for contempt of court. If it is today, or maybe as far back as 10 years ago, that case would have been dismissed without even much consideration. But at that time, Ch uh, uh, Mr. Sri Ram was the court of appeal judge. He was a sitting court of appeal judge. And Murray Herbert was convicted. I was defending. We raised all kinds of defences, valid defences. Went to the court of appeal. He was again convicted. First reporter, like you guys, reporting about a case and making fair comment. In 50 years, the first reporter in the Commonwealth sent to the prison. Okay, so that is the second acrimonious thing between him and me, uh, and of course involving the, his entire family. Third was the case of Metromac. I think you will remember the Metromac case was the most gripping case uh, in the civil suit. Metromac was a concession holder for toll roads. That was my client. We we won in the high court. No matter what we up to the court of appeal. Uh, Fauzia Holding was the plaintiff. We won. Huh? Metromac won. Fauzia Holding appeal. Uh, Dato Cyrus Das was doing the appeal. He was submitting. As he was submitting, that means I haven't replied yet. He was submitting as an appellant. And uh, Sri Ram came in and simply made utterances that were uncalled for. Uncalled for. Uh, things like suggesting that Tun Daim uh, ran the Ministry of Finance like his grandfather's coffee shop. He said that. It's all on record. And then make un unnecessary comment about their, their honesty, imputed that Halim Sa'ad and Anwar, um, Anwar Osman committed CBT, uh, they were thieves, and so on and so on. Now, unnecessary. This is before I had a chance. Now, you are not lawyers, you would realize that this is not fair. You haven't heard the, the other side story. You're already making judgment. So, of course, you can guess what happened in the court of appeal. I lost. All right? So I wrote a letter to say the further proceeding, because that was an interim proceeding, the further proceeding in the court of appeal, we invite you to recuse yourself in view of your predetermination, because you made predetermination. Now, one would have thought either you disqualify yourself or you say, no, let's carry on. I don't think there is a predetermination. Then we carry on, then we can, we can do whatever. Instead of doing just that, he got his two other brother judges, but he was the one insisting, citing me for contempt. Apparently, writing that letter was a contempt of court. This is, this is sheer bully technique by a judge sitting. Okay, Sheer bully, te bully technique. This is what he's doing. Right now, because he saw his chance to become a DPP, because you know, for those of you who have never become DPP, you may get swollen headed. 
I've been a DPP for nine years, so I'm not solid headed to become a DPP again when I uh, when Anwar's case was uh, was was mooted. Okay, so when you suddenly get powers like that, and you see around you, who can you aim your gun barrel to? And I happen to be the one again. Okay, this is what is happening. So this now, is a bully technique. So now that you're charged, yes. can you still uh, defend uh, Najib? Yes, she has asked me that. I, ca I can defend Najib because uh, I'm not convicted. Okay? Uh, what about as far as the ethics concerned, professional conduct? I mean, will, will that be used against you to ask you to... Um, I don't see anything relevant there because as long as you're not convicted, you're presumed innocent. Otherwise, then you're living in a communist regime. By next week. Yeah. Hopefully by next week.